It is, uh, however, an undeniable reality that the international system remains dominated by the global north. This is naturally reflected in the composition of the G20 as well. Perhaps this mattered less when the globalization process appeared to offer more opportunities, but as it's iniquities and unevenness became more apparent and then as we saw the COVID pandemic take a horrific toll across the world, the need to focus on developing countries has become more compelling. If that was not enough, the consequences of the Ukraine conflict for global food, energy and fertilizer security has added to complexities. And obviously, trade disruptions, high interest rates, and climate events, increasing climate events, have contributed additional factors of stress. When India assumed the G20 presidency last December, we were acutely conscious that most of the global south would not be at the table when we meet. This mattered very much because, as I have underlined, the really urgent problems are those faced by them. To discuss their concerns without providing them a fair hearing appeared extremely unfair. And in and India itself, so much a part of the Global South, could not stand by and let that happen. Therefore, Prime Minister Modi decided to convene the Voice of the Global South Summit in January of this year. We heard from 125 countries directly about their challenges and priorities. And on their behalf, these have been made central to the G20 agenda. The core mandate of the G20 is to promote economic growth and development and that cannot advance if the crucial concerns of the global south in the areas that I have highlighted are not addressed. But having said that, let me step back and bring out some of the structural issues that are today at the heart of the predicament of the global south. Key among them are the concentrations of various kinds created by the last three to four decades of globalization. For a variety of reasons that range from scale, subsidies, technology, human resources, and strategic choices, the Global South was largely reduced to being a consumer rather than a producer. Their contribution very often was to provide resources for manufacturing elsewhere. They not only did not reap the full benefits of economic change, but often ended up saddled with unviable debts emanating from opaque initiatives.